Hello everyone. Welcome to MS Safety webcast. In this video guide, we are going to see the steps to set up DNSSEC for Active Directory Integrated DNS Zone in Windows Server 2019. DNSSEC is a security extension that enables a DNS zone and all records in the zone to be signed cryptographically so that the clients can validate the DNS record when they receive it. For this demo, we are using TSLab created in VirtualBox and this is a domain controller with the hostname ws2k19-dc01. We have a single domain active directory forest named mylab.local with one domain controller. Without wasting time, let's open DNS management console. To do that, we need to click on tools and select DNS. Under DNS, you can verify I have two existing active directory integrated primary DNS zone. But for the testing purpose, I'm going to create new AD integrated primary DNS zone. Click on next. It will be a primary and AD integrated. Next again. Next. And here I'm going to specify the zone name. msftwebcast.local. Let's click on next. Next and finish. Under msftwebcast.local, I'm going to create one host record. www.msftwebcast.local with the IP address 172.18.72.5. Let's click on Add. OK. And click on Done. Let's again click on Forward Lookup Zones and verify msftwebcast.local zone is AD integrated, primary DNS zone. And under DNS sec status, you can see it is not signed yet. Let's click on our DNS zone, right click on it and select DNS sec. Select Sign the zone. Click on Next. Windows Server 2019 DNS Server support three signing options. For this demonstration, we are going to select Customize Zone Signing Parameters, even though we are going to use default settings to sign the zone. Click on Next. Here it is asking us about the Key Master. The Key Master is the main DNS server that generates and manages cryptographic keys for DNSSEC protected zone. Any authoritative DNS zone that hosts the copy of primary DNS zone can be a key master. So in our case, our local DNS server is going to be the key master for msftwebcast.local zone. Let's click on next. Now on this console, we can see a brief overview information about key signing key. Now what is key signing key? KSK is a master key pair that will be used to sign zone signing key. Let's click on next. On key signing key, let's click on add button to add a new key. Under key generation, you can see uh, default selected options is there. Generate a new signing key. If you have pre-generated keys, that time you can select the checkbox and select your keys here. Fine. Under key properties, here we have options to select cryptographic algorithm, which is already set to RSA associate 256. If you want to change, you can change it from here. Under key length, here we have options to change the bit length. By default, it is selected to 2048. We are going to use the default selection. Let's click on OK and click on Next. Now it is giving uh, over information about zone signing key. Zone signing key is the public key, private key key pair that will be used to sign and produce resource record signature. This will be used to sign the each of record in resource record set under your DNS zone. Let's click on next. Click on add and the certain parameters are again there like cryptographic algorithm, key length, etc. We are going to use the default selection. So I'm going to click on this OK button. Click next. Now here we need to select settings related to next secure NSEC. What is NSEC? NSEC is used when the DNS response has no data to provide to the client. This record authenticates that the host does not exist. And again, we are going to use the default selection. Click on next. Here I'm going to select this checkbox, enable the distribution of trust anchor for this zone. If your DNS server is also a domain controller, that time trust anchors for this zone will be automatically distributed among all other DNS servers running on domain controller in your forest. If your DNS server is not domain controller, that time, trust anchor for the zone will be added in local trust anchor store only. Let's click on next. 
Here we are going to use default parameters for DNSSEC signing and polling. Let's click on next, click on next and wait for the process to finish. Here we are receiving message that the zone has been successfully signed. Click on finish to close this wizard. Okay. Initially we had only three records. Now let's right click here and select refresh. You can see plenty of other records will be there like DNS key. Resource record signatures are also available here for name server, for startup authority and as well as for our host record. Fine. Now let's click on forward lookup zones and click on refresh. Now here you can see our MSFT webcast.local zone is signed with DNSSEC and our key master is ws2k19-dc01.mylab.local. That means local server. Let me show you one more thing under trust points as well and let's expand trust points and expand local here you will find your zone and that trust point will be available under this if you double click on it then public key will be available here fine so now we have successfully signed our active directory integrated dns zone using dnsf now we need to tell our dns clients that they need to validate their dns request this is simply done with the help of group policy. So let's open group policy management console. Click on tools and select group policy management. Let's expand our forest, expand domains, mylab.local, expand group policy objects. Let's create a new GPU. For this demonstration, I'm giving name DNS sec tester GPU. Let's click on OK. Let's select newly created GPU. Right click on it and select edit. Maximize the console. Under computer configuration, expand policies, expand windows settings and click on name resolution policy. Under create rules, suffix is already selected. Here we just need to specify our DNS zone name. Fine. Here we need to select enable DNS act in this rule. And also under validation, we need to select this checkbox. Require DNS clients to check that name and address data has been validated by the DNS server. I scroll a little bit and click on create to add this rule under name resolution policy table. Let's click on create. Fine. Now rule is available under name resolution policy table. Let's click on apply. Now we are done with name resolution policy. Let's close group policy management editor console. And now let's link our GPU at a domain level. Let's select mylab.local, right click there and select link an existing GPU. Let's select DNS sac paste GPU. Click on OK. Now we simply need to update the group policy manually on our server as well as on our client computer. Let's open command prompt. Let's run command gp update slash force. Let's do the same on our Windows 10 client computer as well. This is our Windows 10 client computer. Let's manually update the group policy. Let's open command prompt. Let's type command gp update slash force and then press enter key. Okay, as you can see, group policy has been updated successfully. I'm going to close the command prompt and let's open Windows PowerShell. Because first of all, we are going to verify that the clients have the correct name resolution policy table. And for that, we need to run command get hyphen dns client and rpd policy let's press enter key and under namespace you can verify that we have a dnssec in place for dot msft webcast dot local so whenever client will try to resolve any record related to msft webcast dot local dns namespace that time client is going to validate that resource record fine how we can check that whether the records are actually getting signed or not for MSFT webcast.local TNS namespace. For that, let's ping to www.msftwebcast.local because in a background, our client is going to send a query to our DNS server to resolve the IP address from the FQDN www.msftwebcast.local. And we are also going to capture the packet using Wiresar packet capturing tool. Let's select Ethernet adapter, let's double click on it and go to the Windows PowerShell and press enter key. Now as you can see we are receiving replay. Okay, let's go back to Wiresar packet capturing tool, let's stop capturing packets, let's filter, 
for DNS traffic. Fine. Here we have a request from our client computer to our DNS server for www.msubtivewebcast.local. Now let's double click on this and under DNS query, under query you can verify this query is for www.msubtivewebcast.local but I am more interested about additional records. Let's expand root and expand cell. Here you can see that bit is set that is it telling us to accept the DNS sec security for resource records. And that's the reason that when DNS server sent the answer, that time that zone signing key will be there. Let's double click on it. Here, now answer is there that the IP address is 172.18.72.5 for that record. But under you can see resource record signature is there. Fine. Algorithm is already there. RSA SSA 256. Type resource record signature. Time to leave value set is there. Means TTL is also there. Original TTL, signature expiration, time interval is also there. And signer name. Here you can verify our zone name is also there. MSFTWebcast.local. And this is the signature. Fine. So after seeing the signature, we can see that we have successfully implemented DNSSEC for our local Active Directory Integrated DNS Zone msubtwebcast.local. That concludes our video demonstration. Thank you all for watching this video.